Hi everyone, I'm Iris Blue, speaker and coach, and welcome to my YouTube channel. The place to be if you want to be fired up to your full potential. gonna tell you my story and this is gonna be quite a long video and that's why I'm splitting it up in two parts so this is part one and if you want to see part two of the video you can find the link down below so hi I'm Iris and I call myself Iris Blue but clearly that's not my real name my real name is way more complicated it's not easy to spell it's not easy to pronounce it's a name that only exists in the netherlands and only two families have this name and when i was an international beauty queen i noticed that my name was just way too hard so i changed it to blue miss blue was actually my nickname when i was a model because of my blue eyes and i yes i did modeling <laughs> which is a very short time period but one of my dear friends and photographers that I worked with a lot call me Miss Blue and that's why I changed my name to Iris Blue. Also because the work that I do and because I talk about sexual abuse, I decided to change my name to Iris Blue because I don't necessarily want my family to be associated with this because they have their own lives and they have their own choices and I don't want everybody with my name to be associated with what I do. So that's why I changed it. So I live in the Netherlands and I'm engaged to my fiance uh, who is amazing and I have two cats. I'm a speaker and I speak about several subjects. One of those is sexual abuse. Uh, I also speak about personal branding and I speak about goal getting and getting a life that you want. Many of you that have been following me for a while actually know that I didn't have the most easy youth. And I'm not saying this to be sad or to be to, or for you to to find me sad now I'm not I'm I'm just saying this because it made me into who I am. We always had enough money and my parents gave me more than enough love. But somehow I just seemed extremely unlucky. Me and my family to be honest. One of the first things that happened to me that really made an impact on my life is that I was raped. I was raped when I was four years old. But I don't necessarily want to get into that right now. It just made a big impact on me and it took many years to overcome. And if you actually want to know my story, you can go to the website uh, www.phoenixpeopleproject.com uh, because I make a documentary series about not only my story, but stories of people of all different backgrounds that have the same experience. Um, so please go check that out. Um, it's a passion project of mine. It's something I've wanted to do for a very, very long time. And I'm very happy that I get to do this. Um, so if you want to learn more about that side of my life or that story, please go check the phoenixpeopleproject.com out. Some other things that happened to me is that I was, I was in a... I was burned, I was in a, a firework accident, um, but actually the most, the hardest thing of my youth that I remember is that I just didn't fit in. Maybe it's because when I was young I already been through a lot, but I just didn't fit in. And I always felt that I didn't belong, I always, I couldn't understand people of my own age, I actually couldn't understand people in general, I always just feel out of place. School was definitely one of the toughest places for me. I was bullied a lot. And again, I'm not saying this because uh, because I want you to be sad for me because it really made me in who I am and I wouldn't change a thing about the person that I have become. Of course, there's, <laughs> there's always improvement, but I want to change a thing. Um, but I was bullied a lot and uh, school was hard for me. And when I was in... Um, in primary school people told me well you fit better in when you go to high school high school would be better for you and of course you can imagine high school was worse and when i was in high school people would say well when you go to college there you fit in college would be better for you and of course college was even no no not worse but it was still i didn't i, I didn't feel at home there i 
always felt like I needed to live somebody else's life instead of mine. Uh, and I didn't necessarily knew what my life would look like. When I was in high school and I was 17 years old, my dad got into an accident. He fell downstairs and he had, and he hit his head very hard, um, actually between the railings of the stairs. He had six brain bleedings. I, don't, I actually don't know what the word in English is, but he had six um, bleedings in his brain. One, two, three on this side and three on that side. He was sick for eight years and um, past December he uh, he died. So I don't want to get into that uh, right now as well because as you can see it's still pretty hard for me. Um, but that guy taught me a lot and I'm really grateful for every every experience that I got to have with him. Because my dad had an accident when I was 17 and my school was really suffering um, because I was taking care of him every time I was at home. My mom told me maybe it's better that you move out. Not out of any despite or not out of any anger but more because she wanted me to live my own life and she noticed that if I stayed at home I would just take care of my dad because that's, that is something that's in my nature. I cannot not take care of people if I see they need my help. When I was 18 I moved in with my ex-boyfriend. Um, it didn't last long. I, I lived with him for a year and um, when we broke up I also found that my uh, my college that I chose wasn't fitting for me anymore and I stopped, I quit school and um, I actually was about to lose my home as well. I started to be a social worker and it just wasn't a fit anymore and I needed to, I almost needed to move out of my house because I couldn't pay it by myself anymore. I all, we were a two person household first and now I was just by myself and I was still in school so I didn't make that much money. I had such a well thought up plan. I had a five year plan and it just all fell away. It just all disappeared. And this was actually the first time I really had a breakdown. There's no other words for it. I was really depressed and it wasn't, I think, the first time in my life that I felt depressed, but it was the first really breakdown that I thought. I just felt that I was living somebody else's life and I didn't, I couldn't handle it anymore. But I pulled myself together, I got out of the ashes and I started a new school. I started studying communication and I started doing pageantry. Thank you so much for watching part one of my story. If you want to see part two, don't forget to click on the link in the description box down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it so much that you do. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe because I am making more videos and turn on notifications so you get updated every time I post a new video. I will see you next time. And don't forget that you have the power to get the life you want.